Okay, I believe we left off at initiative, so let's start with that. Anybody have any questions before we move into the first round? Negative. Oh, yeah, we turned the corner and go, holy crap. Sorry, what was that, Joe? I was trying what? to remember where we were. Corey turned the corner and said, nope, and backed up. Yeah, but having one of Kenny's characters run like a little girl is not really impressive. Where are we at in relation to this point, Critter? This one, over here. It's right over here. Okay, good. Far enough away that he can't see you or help you. No, that's fine. Did you roll, Corey? We have the plus nine. Uh, nine within sixty and eleven within thirty. You're super uh, loud, uh, Yam. <clears throat> Not bad loud. You just sound like you have your gain turned way up. Can barely hear anyone else, and then you're like on a loudspeaker. Is that better? Yeah, that's a little better. I was so, so busy planning all of the encounters after this, I completely forgot to set up for this encounter. I'm going to guess none of those are hits on you. Uh, the 29 is. It's on Corey. Oh. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, then we're on to Yam. As I quickly shuffle through all of my documents and find all these monsters again. I'll shoot the blaspheme three times. Okay. I don't believe he has any major resistances. Slashing, because you don't have the magic spells. Um, I think we're on 66. Plus six plus six. I think you're on plus six because uh, what's his face? Kronos is on plus twelve. Okay. I think you were facing a bunch of things that had fire resistance early on. Three plus four then. Nice. Uh, I think they're all hits. And a crit, you confirm. So for your confirm crit, uh, you do max damage and then uh, normal damage twice. So you need uh, four damages in total plus your max. Alright, and then I'll add an extra eight on that. An extra 
eight. Well, uh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's an extra max. Oh, yeah, it's max damage in your morale bonus. And plus six. Bonus. Okay, yeah. sweet. If it's like uh, magic damage, like from fire or something, it doesn't count. But if it's just a stat a static bonus, it does. And he said he has no resistance, right? He has resistance five slashing. So. Okay. Until your 11th level character buys a magic bow. Yeah, we'll get on it. Okay, are you done? Yep. Okay, then we are on to the Bodak. Um, Kronos, are you affected by the Bodak? You have no. your eyes closed, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so that would leave uh, our druid. Looks like he's far enough away. Yeah, he's just outside of range. So he will just club you. Pair of 30. Do you think those a hit? Pair does a hit. I have a question about parrying and uncanny dodge and blind fight. Shoot. Can I parry a thing with my eyes closed with blind fight and uncanny dodge? Yep, but you would... Uh, I don't know what uncanny dodge has to do with it. But... I don't know, I just think I have. Nope, that's totally fair. Where do you get uncanny dodge from? Aren't you uh, I think Pamian's Pam ability gives me it. I'm actually triple checking it, but I know I have blind fight. Yeah, um, I don't think Uncanny Dodge gives you any benefit in this situation, but parrying, you would have your standard 50% miss chance on a parry. And then in addition to that, you would get your extra reroll for your blind fighting. And we will do this. So I'll roll... Roll the first parry, and I will roll my first counter. I should probably roll if I even, you know, hit it. So, there's my first D2, and we're good. And looks like you failed to be attacked early there. Uh, but I'll do it anyway. The, uh, my 12 is a roll to disarm. Ah. Anytime you parry, you provoke. Well, I don't automatically parry it. Uh... No, no, no. Anytime you attempt to parry, you provoke a disarm attempt. Sure. Well, that's nice. Well, you've made several... Uh, well, you're still way ahead of him. You both rolled a one. You both okay. suck. Uh, then you can roll your second one. Oh, nice. Sweet. So we'll try to parry. So it looks like we get over the 30, and then we do the disarm. Okay, you managed to parry both of his attacks, and he's the only Bodak, so run to Yogi. Okay, so Corey and uh, Yogi, you can roll your saves. Last theme is DC 29. I make it. Okay, so you take 14 points of damage. Corey? It was 29, right? I, I almost can't make that at all. Okay. Why don't you just take the full 28 if you want? I don't want to. Can I just not? Okay. Um. Then I assume Yogi is done and we're on to Kronos. 
I full attack the evil Bodak man. Okay. Could are we hasted still? Yes. All right. This is my first attack. We hit. Well, I'm, al I'm allowed to hit, so we're good there. Oh, did you cast haste again? Yeah, you did at the beginning of this fight. Yeah, and sang at the same time. I'm pretty sure. All right, attack him again. Got a reroll. All right. What's the reroll for? Fine fight. Oh, okay. So that is two hits so far. Nice. Oh, you're such a cheater. What's his DR? What's that 15 from? Uh, Bodak has DR, Cold Iron, and Magic, so you can overcome five of it with your magical weapon. I need him one more time, and he's instant dead. So that's we get th we get two. How many attacks at you get level attacks, eleven? Do we get? You get three attacks as a base plus one for haste. Gotcha. That's what I thought. Oh, lucky bastard! All right, fair enough. Do your math. Uh, you do anything else? Um, can't really do anything else. Uh, five with blind with blind fight, can you five foot? Yeah, you can always blind fight. Blind fight, blind fighting basically makes you invisible when you can't see, or invincible when you can't see. You suffer no penalties of any sort. I'm just yeah. gonna. Is, yeah. is this a standable square? Uh, that's a good question. I don't have it scrolled down far enough. No, that is not. Okay, then I will just uh, then go back here, and I'll I'll do his damage now. Okay, Gory, you're up. Fuckers on seven hit points. You want to roll your uh, save, Corey? What is it again? Death Gaze is DC 20 Fortitude, I believe. What did you say the DC was? Uh, 20. Okay, I make it. Then you are not dead. I assume you're done? Yep. Okay, the mummy beside you will attack you. Assume 26 is not a hit. You will cast Spiritual Weapon on you, Corey. Who's casting what? Spiritual Weapon. Is it that guy? No, the Mummy Lord in the background. Oh, fuck him. I don't like him. Yeah, you're going to like him in a lot less than a minute. He smells like feet. He does.
I always forget how crappy this guy's wisdom is. 28 a hit on you, Corey? Nope. Okay, so he will cast his two virtues. And that is the end of his turn. The other mummy already went, and I think that's everyone. I never went. No, I meant all of the mummies. Um, I thought you said uh, everyone is. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my my mistake. Uh, then it is the mage's turn. So he will move to there and then conical the hallway. And that is DC 22. That's actually a pretty brutal cone of cold. Okay, Yogi, you make the save so you don't take anything. Uh, Corey? You say it's Fortitude? Fortitude, DC 22. Nice, okay. So uh, take 22 on a half save. And that only leaves him with his swift action. And he will magic missile quarry. Is that Kona Cold was reflex? It was originally, but I changed the uh, damage types to make Cold a Fortitude save. Just to spread the saves around. I switched all the saving throws to a damage type system instead of a uh, per spell type, because everything is reflex save. And dexterity is already disproportionately powerful, even as a non-rogue. Um, then we're on to Barda. Are we still hasted? Yep. Yep. I keep actually clicking the blast thing. I guess you guys are plus nine to initiative. That's why you rolled so insane. Uh, any to hit modifiers? Are we still at the plus five? From last uh, time? Five, five, five hit, five damage.
Oh, I rolled a two. That sucks. All right, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's everything I can do right now without causing an attack of opportunity. Has that mummy already used his attack of opportunity this round? He has not, but you wouldn't know either way. Oh, that's true. Um, Is there any I, point in uh, time when your wife isn't going to back She up always chooses to, she does full clean house days on Saturdays. That just happens to line up with D&D, &D, so... Apologies for that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I just think it's fucking hilarious that she waits until you were playing D and D to turn on the vacuum. Like we were talking for like a half hour before the game, no noise in the background. The second game starts, vacuum's on. Um. So after Barda is the Thrasher. Um, everybody, uh, I think everybody, hang on a sec. Oh no, everybody except for, uh, Yogi and Yam, and obviously Violet, um, you feel a wave of cold energy um, shoot through the room. It doesn't have any effect on you initially, um, but you definitely feel like you've been uh, stripped of something. You kind of feel like something grabbed onto a piece of you and pulled it away. Distinctly not good. Very not good, especially when you figure out what it is. And then it's the Ghoul Lord's turn, so the Dretch will march into combat. Uh, the one north of you does not get an attack because he has to double move. The one in the front of you and in front of Corey. Um, yeah, it'll be Corey in the attacks. I assume they are all misses. And then the uh, pack of ghoul or pack of gas that you thought were dead. Reanimate. That's got to be the coolest ability ever. And then we're back in the initiative. Ghoul Lord has a shitty initiative. Unlike the gas, who are ridiculously fast. Uh, 
Blaspheme is dead, so it is Corey's go. What is it to tumble through threatened squares again? 25? To tumble through threatened is 15. To occupy it is 25. Occupied. And you have to roll it once for every occupied square you go through? Uh, yeah, and each each successive uh, check is at plus 2. Yeah, plus 9. Uh, plus 9 for me. Okay. And his check is fucking insane to start with. How far can I tumble because we're hasted? You can move half your movement rate unless you have like the accelerated tumble. So your movement rate should be a base of 30 plus 30. So I can tumble for 30 feet. Yep. Unless you have something else that boosts your movement rate. Do they have a movement bonus, Yam? Uh, no, it saves an initiative. Okay. That that square doesn't count as occupied, right? I don't know. Where are you? Oh, the you're underneath weapon. the dude. Okay. The spiritual weapon isn't uh, isn't occupying a square, right? No. So I'll five foot into that square and then I'll tumble. Where are you tumbling to? To the other side of the gap. Oh, okay. That's a lot of checks to make. Whoa. Especially with a broken macro. Well, that didn't work. I was trying to use the companion app, but I guess uh, it's terrible, so. What's the companion app? It's like your character sheet on, on like, a tablet. Oh, okay. But clearly it doesn't work. Are you using your tablet to play, or are you on... No, you can't. There's no way to use the tablet to play. I guess you could probably use the web browser on a tablet, but no, I just had it so I didn't have to have this stupid another thing open. Okay, that doesn't even seem possible. Well, you're right, too. <laughs> Yeah, it's not taking into account all the other, the plus nine or whatever. And these are threatened square ones, right? Well, so it's if three... you're five foot back, you're not in any threatened squares. But I have to tumble through this threatened square, and this threatened square, and this threatened square. Oh, okay, I didn't realize you were going that way. I thought you were going through, uh, straight across through Yogi. No. Okay, well, you can go through those all those threatened squares with your first... Uh... Tumble and then roll for the gassed one. Remember, it costs double movement to go through an occupied square, so that's actually quadruple in this case. I probably just have to double move then. Okay, I get to the other side of the gassed. So that was 5, 10, 15, 20 feet to him, and then it's another... Uh, 20, 20 feet to go through. Yeah. Oh, there's a there's space here. Okay. So it's 20 feet to there, and then I will continue tumbling, I guess, to Violet. Oh, you're going for healing. Yeah, because um, I got my ass kicked. Fair enough. Strangely enough, you still have more hit points than Chronos, and that was the reason you were targeted. Yeah, I just know that. Uh, I'm going to be the main target for a bunch of those spells, so i got to get out of there before I die. If Barda was smart, he would wall off that whole area. Man, I wish someone knew Wall of Magma. Magma? That seems like a stupid thing to make a wall out of, since it'll just fall to the ground. No, it actually holds up. No, it wouldn't. Magma's liquid. I know, but it's an awesome spell. Okay, uh, I assume Corey is done. So we're on to the Bodak, who is dead. So then in Yam. Uh, I'll delay. Okay, Yogi, you're up. All right, I guess I'll start with the one behind me.
and then be forced to use your second attack? Unfortunately. Don't you just get to cleave a bunch of shit? Because you hit something? Or do you have to kill something? You had to kill it to kill. cleave. Um, okay, when that one falls, um, you take nine points of negative energy damage, which really catches you off guard because that shouldn't get through your protection. No save or anything? Oh, yeah, you get your standard uh, save. It's DC 23. Okay, so you take four points. I wonder how many times he can revivify the same ghast. Oh, I missed the last one. I think you get an extra attack, no? Oh, yeah, haste it. And another cleave. So you take another 12 points. All right, and I still got a swift, right? Yep. Cure minor. Okay, you got to roll your two spellcraft for that. Oh. oh. One for, what's that, uh, seven points and one for five points. All right, I'm done. Um, I'll take my turn after him. Okay. Oh, Yogi, you were outside of the range of the spell, weren't you? It was you and Yam that didn't get hit by the blast. Correct. Okay, so you would uh, only take the uh, the two points, save for half. So none. No, it's twelve points, save for half. And I made both. Oh my yeah, save. you made the save. Yeah, you're right. Never mind. All right. Oh. Move down here. And I'll, uh, I mean, I'll just keep moving here. I need to be within 30 feet to do my thing. I'll, um, cast resist energy cold on everyone. Wait, does it, uh, wait, before I do it, does it stack? Like, you can do both? Do both what? Because they've already, uh, they should already have fire, resist fire on them. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're different spells, they do different things. Okay, yeah, I'll cast, uh, resist cold. How much cold does that give them? Um, 30. Because, yep, level 11, yep, 30. Okay. Doing anything else? Um, I will swift heal Yogi. Are you guys? Oh, you can't have faith healing anyway. Yep, so Yogi gets eight, and that's my turn.
Okay. Um, then we're on to the gas. They will all attack Yogi. I assume none of those are hits. Nope. Um, then we are on to the mage. I hate having minions. Um, I guess he will cast Magic Missile on Barda. He'll do that as his swift action and then as his uh, move action he'll hit Kronos with one and then as his standard action he will target the area with a dispel magic believe that means everybody within the radius um, rolls against their highest level spell. What kind of save is it? It's a tw it's not you don't get to do anything. I just uh, when Oh, he rolled against us. Uh, yeah. He uh, rolls a caster level check 11 plus whoever cast the spell um, it's a 20 foot radius burst bursts don't go around corners do they I do not know. Yeah, I have no idea. Can someone quickly look that up? I'm not sure if it's a burst or an emanation that goes around corners. One of them does. But we'll start with Barda. What's the highest level spell on you? Probably the stone skin. Which level spell? You have a stone skin on? Yeah. Stone skin as a fourth level spell as a base. It's probably fifth or sixth for you, unless you have a way of casting it at lower level. I think it's stone. Let me name this right. I don't know what spells have you got cast on you. No, I know. I, I'm just making sure I have the name. Um, yeah, stone skin. Same spell from protection. It does not go around corners. Burst do not. Okay, that's what I figured. I knew there was one that didn't. Okay, so 23. That's not particularly good. Against your uh, 11 as a base, Barda, plus your caster level, which is also 11, and then your wisdom modifier. So that's not high enough to dispel your spell. Kronos, what's the highest spell on you? Uh, what's your resist energy level, Cooter? 
Three. Yeah, then it's either that or haste. And so you have two resist energies and a haste? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say the uh, highest level one would be the one with the longest duration. So that would be your cold resist. Kind of cold. Or whatever, not kind of cold. Uh, 30 would remove that. I assume a 30 is uh, 11 plus your spellcaster level and charisma, yeah? Um. Uh... Le you say level plus 10 plus, it would be 10 plus 11 plus 9. Ooh, that might he needs a 31. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't dispel it. It's actually, uh, I think the base is 11 plus uh, your caster level and your modifier. Okay, okay. Um, uh, yeah. so that just leaves Yogi in the crowd. What do you got on you, Yogi? Oh no, Yogi and Yam, sorry. Uh, Owl's Wisdom, 5th level spell. Okay, well he fails on that. And what do you got on you, Yam? Uh, resist energy and haste. Actually, uh, does the um, Eagle Wisdom from the God count as a spell? No, right? Does it? Uh, I think it does. Let me confirm that. can dispel but not counter spell like abilities. So what's your uh your god ability? Uh greater eagle splendor. I don't know what level it is though. Greater eagle splendor would be a 6 level spell I believe. Well these spell acts are based on charisma I'm pretty sure so is that yeah, he has a bitch of a time getting through your charisma modifier. Okay, I think it was only Kronos who got hit with that. That was pretty shitty. I didn't even get my shit taken away either. <laughs> 30 didn't do it. He needed a 31. Oh, was that? Oh, okay. So nobody got uh, 11, 11 plus 11 plus 9 is 31. Yep. No. Uh, so he didn't beat anyone in there. Okay. Yeah, Yan's got an insane check because his wisdom or charisma is so ridiculous well that was unfruitful i mean he did a lot of damage with swift actions yeah his real problem is that there's so many things in the way that he can't hit like he can't throw a lightning bolt down the hallway or any of his big area of effect because the only thing that he has is Kona Cold and he cast his one Kona Cold. Okay, I think that is it for them. Just confirming all these stats are correct. Yeah, I think uh, I'm done, so we're on to the Mummy Lord. 